In case you missed backing our Kickstarter campaign last month, I didn't want you to miss my interview with Stephen Bonacore of Stronghold Games. So, in this episode of Getting Geeky with Game Relief, you're going to get just that. If you're interested in supporting us here at Game Relief and Getting Geeky with Game Relief and everything we're doing, but miss the Kickstarter campaign, you can still support us. Just send me a message via Getting Geeky with Game Relief and we'll be able to make that happen and get you some rewards too. If you did support us via Kickstarter, be on the lookout for our surveys really soon. Sorry that you didn't get Thursday's episode on Thursday. It came to you Friday. So if you missed that, go back and listen. But we didn't want you to have to suffer as we did, as we had the flu in the leaf home. Have you ever seen a sick tree? Anyways, after my chat with Steven, we'll see what's on Kickstarter. But first, a message about our sponsors. This episode is also sponsored by Furious Tree Games, LLC, and their latest game creation, Widget Ridge, which is a steampunk deck-building game with crazy inventions that connect to make even cooler inventions. It's an Ian Taylor creation. I had the privilege of having Ian on the show. You can find that on our episode entitled, Can You Tell Me How to Get to Widget Ridge? So, go give it a listen and then back Widget Ridge, which has already surpassed its funding goal by Saturday the 27th of April. This episode is being sponsored by Overbattle the All War. The only true 4X game that's also a war game that doesn't take forever to set up. It'll be on Kickstarter through the 20th of April. More to be said during Kickstarter Corner. You like games? Check. You like manga? Check. You like the 80s? Check. You're going to love this next sponsor, Double Check. This episode is sponsored by Robotech Crisis Point. It's up for pre-order. Get some awesome exclusives by pre-ordering it today. In case you missed it, go give my interview with Dave, the designer and publisher, a listen by searching for Robotech Crisis Point on my website, GameRelieveGo.com. Then pre-order soon, because when they run out of exclusives, they run out. This episode is powered by Shard Hunters, the card game. It'll be on Kickstarter through the 10th of May. Find out more during Kickstarter Corner. Last but not least, this episode is powered by Hachu Games and their game Plunderbun, the back alley business board game. If you didn't catch the coolness in their company name, I clearly can't do it justice. So go give my interview entitled Plunderbun and Pickles a listen and then back Plunderbun before Saturday the 20th of April. Getting geeky with Gamer Leaf, the podcast in which one man strives to level up his geekhood and helping you do the same one battle at a time. Now, let's get geeky with Gamer Leaf. Welcome to Getting Geeky with Gamer Leaf. If you backed the Kickstarter and we hit the $3,500 stretch goal before the 48 hour mark, you're going to be getting this content before everybody else. We're pleased to be joined by none other than Steven from Stronghold Games. Thank you so much for joining us on Getting Geeky with Gamer Leaf. We really appreciate it, Steven. Thank you for having me, sir. I really appreciate being on. This is great. No problem. Yeah, we're glad we could catch up with you. We were trying to get you on before when your aftershock was going, but I guess that didn't work out, unfortunately. It's crazy times. There's just so much stuff going on here at the Stronghold and with the new combined company with Indie Boards and Cards. It's uh, It's been very, very hectic in all ways, but uh, you know, that's part of the business. Yeah, for sure. I, I feel your pains a little bit. Probably not on the same same level, but... We'll get there someday, maybe. I don't know. But yeah, before we get into everything about Aftershock and Stronghold Games, let's rewind a little bit. How did you get into playing tabletop board games, Stephen? I have been a gamer since 
day one of my life almost. I mean, literally. So, um, you know, growing up uh, in, a, in a family that got together to play games, all of the stuff that you would see at a, uh, you know, mass market kind of store, the monopolies and the saris and the troubles and all that. And I, and I kept doing that through all kinds of times of my life i you know i got into role playing for quite a while i still love i still love doing that in the as computers hit the scene i got into computer gaming i got into ccgs played some magic played some vampire the eternal struggle then played some mmos but in the end like during the boom of the of games coming back in the late 90s and early 2000s i just realized that the best way for me to game is to game around the table together with friends and acquaintances. It's, you know, we're all social beings and, and doing that is sort of the, the best way of experiencing the competition or the cooperation of a game. So it's, it's in my blood for sure. And board gaming in particular is my, by far, my uh, choice of game styles. Awesome. And you brought up competition or co-op. Do you prefer one over the, one over the other? Um, no, I really, I don't think I really do prefer one or the other. I mean, I, I guess you know, there are more competitive games. So in general, competition uh, over the game table is a, is a bigger thing. But at the same time, uh, great co-op games stand for themselves. And I love, you know, I love games like betrayal at house on the hill where everyone's on the same team until something happens or one versus many games where everyone is trying to work on something and like not alone that's my game not alone and and the creature is going against you and i mean those all of those kinds of games are great every every game uh has a different type of experience or a different story uh to tell in in the end and a narrative uh that the game does while you're playing it so i'm I'm happy simply to be gaming in almost all of its forms. Well, that's good to hear. Now, do you? I know it's very hard to pick because there's so many games out there. Do you have a current favorite, or what are you playing these days? Well, um, I've always I've said on many podcasts my favorite game in the entire universe is War of the Ring, which tells the story. I mean, literally the greatest narrative of all time. It tells the story of of the Lord of the Rings uh, and the Fellowship trying to get to. Mordor to dunk the ring, and it's just an amazing game. What I've been playing a lot these days uh, are a bunch of things from my catalog because we've we're starting convention season and we're got to pitch games and show games off. So I've been playing a lot of Flamme Rouge, which is our racing game set in a bicycle racing theme, but very very thematic. It just feels so tense as as the bikes around the final corners. Um, that's a big one uh, in my catalog. The selling very great, and uh, I've been playing a lot of it with with people outside of my own gaming group. Um, and also now our new line of roll and write games, which started with Gan Shun Clever, which we've, we've renamed for English to That's Pretty Clever. Uh, and then the follow up games, which are twice as clever. And we've also just announced recently that we're also going to be doing Bricks and Dizzle. And there's going to be a fifth one coming out this year. So we have a whole series of these. Roll and Writes are really. Um, really big mechanic in the industry right now and they're most of the time so easy to understand uh easy to pick up easy to teach so uh we feel that we're going to do a really great job for gamers uh, with this entire series of roll and write games yeah they're pretty fun and quick my friend from my gaming group uh chris james who runs uh, casual game insider he recently um what do you call it made one um it was picked up by some a designer overseas i forget where he said and then he recently designed one that he he don't know what he's going to do with it yet but it was based on the stock market it was kind of fun yeah chris good guy i've known him for years cool awesome but yeah i've heard him talk on the podcast and especially your podcast about flam rouge i've never unfortunately i've never played any of your game but flam rouge from what i can hear it sounds pretty fun it's it's a yeah it's just such an amazing thematic game where you 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 you're managing a team of two uh cyclists one is what's called the roller he's kind of the the steady one uh, he's got more cards that are sort of in the middle and then you have your sprinter who can have these amazing big sprints that he can do but he also most of his cards are much low, lower lower because he's going to get going to not he's going to use his energy for that final sprint um plays 
just like you would think there's drafting involved in the game you know where they where the bicyclists if they're if they're behind each other with one space they can draft up to the other that other point um and you've got to just kind of outthink the other players when you're going to make that big move when you're going to stay in the pack when you're going to be able to use their drafting so um it's a game that continues to to sell really well we've got two expansions out for that peloton which adds a fifth sixth player as well as enables you to play from one to 12 players you can have a massive game of flam rouge and meteo which is weather in french so you <clears throat> excuse me you can add weather effects onto the track so all kinds of crazy things can happen where there could be a crash there could be um uh, wind could uh, help you push your cyclists a little bit more and things like that so great great game and it continues to rise in the rankings on bgg it's about to crack the top 200 right now uh, and uh it's uh, kind of unheard of it keeps selling more you know over time which is a really big thing that doesn't happen a lot in this industry yeah usually a lot of the industry i don't know if it, how it is with uh traditionally published games but it seems like a lot of people do a kickstarter game and then they're you never hear from them again no that's that's sort of the thing uh certainly with kickstarters i mean except for the some of the ones by the bigger companies the games just uh, they want they're very much one and dones uh the companies themselves sometimes are just very much one and dones um Overall, in, in the gaming industry, even with traditional distribution, which is most of what Stronghold does, um, though, though we, as you know, we are doing some Kickstarters now, um, it, games have a very short lifespan these days. There's too much product coming out in the industry, and that's creating a lot of confusion for gamers, right? So the game comes out, some stores stock it. A few people, a bunch of people buy it, and then it's kind of just goes by the wayside. So really finding those those gems as a publisher are very important because obviously those are the games that fuel the company's growth over time. You really want uh, what's what are called uh, evergreen titles, a title that will consistently sell month after month, year after year, basically forever. Terraforming Mars is certainly has become that for us. It very quickly, we realized what we had in our hands when we released that game now two and a half years ago. It has consistently sold more and more over time, which is a really, really great thing. Now the, of course, number four ranked board game on Board Game Geek. Well, there you go. Yeah, and I want to say most recently I saw a, a mat or something to go, a play mat or something going along with Terraforming Mars that somebody, like a fan, had made that's on Kickstarter currently, I think. Yes, we did see that. That's, uh, it's okay. We don't make any money on those things as long as they don't use any of the copyrighted or trademark materials. They're free to do that. We're going to have a lot of bunch, we're going to have a lot of surprises uh, with the Terraforming Mars IP over time. Uh, I've hinted at a bunch of things already but you can assume that we're gonna have some great player boards that we're gonna we've already announced the fifth expansion which we're gonna kickstart that's gonna actually happen pretty soon i should probably tout that right now terraforming mars turmoil is the fifth expansion and we're gonna be launching that uh as a kickstarter on may 14th so somewhat around the time this drops i would guess i'm not sure when um uh, this is going to drop. Oh, uh, did I say May? It might be. Oh, I got to know. You said May, yeah. Is it May or April? Now I got to find out. Oh, I'm on the spot. Hold on. Here we go. April. April 16th. I got it. I got it. Leaf. I got it. <laughs> Mr. Leaf. Okay, there we don't have to wait as long as we expected. Yeah. That's good. So April 16th, that's going to start. We actually ha we actually brought it back in because we were ahead of schedule on that and behind schedule on other things. So April 16th, Terraforming Mars Turmoil, the fifth expansion will be kickstarted. And guess what? What happens you know, when you get enough human beings together, they've got different differing opinions on how things should happen. So there'll be factions on Mars that'll be saying things like, "No, no, no, oh, we we don't think this terraforming is good. Let's just let's slow it down." They're like the Red Party, like let's keep Mars more, you know, the way it was. And then you're going to have like the Kelvinists. No, we must continue increasing the temperature. This is going to be good for all of us, for life, for everything. So all of these factions, it's going to be a political portion of the game where you're going to have to put delegates to the different parties that will be forming on the planet, the different factions, and there'll be a sort of a Martian Senate, and there'll be global events that come out. And these global events, you'll be able to see into the future sort of what those events will be. There'll be a current event, There'll be an event for the next generation and an event for the generation after that. So depending on who has the most or a certain number of delegates uh, with any given party, their benefit 
or disadvantage will be increased, benefit increased, disadvantage be uh, reduced when those global events hit. So there won't be surprises. You can ignore the politics, big air quotes. You can ignore the politics and just not get the bigger benefits or the or the reduced negative effects if you want because you have another strategy going on. Or you can play the politics and get in there and try to manipulate the events and the views of the rest of the people who are colonizing Mars. Really great expansion for this game and we're calling it an expert expansion because there's going to be a lot more added uh to the gameplay because of this this expansion so if you want more terraforming mars and bigger so quote unquote game in terraforming mars this is the way more player interaction a little bit longer of a game a little definitely more meatier of a game and it sounds like it adds asymmetrical player was that already a part of the game uh terraforming mars is uh has been always been very uh uh Let's say let's say everybody's building their own type of engine. So it's not exactly asymmetrical uh, play, but what you're getting is like I'm going to in terraforming Mars, uh, I'm going to be doing a let's just say a, a greenery strategy where I'm getting a lot of greenery down, and maybe I have that corporation eco line that gives me both benefits and bonuses just for doing that and you might have uh you might be working on a city strategy etc so people have an asymmetrical strategy involved um with terraforming mars but there's not an asymmetrical gameplay with uh with this new module within this new expansion turmoil they'll be able to have a higher amount of interaction between the players uh but they'll be able to either get heavily into the political aspects or not get heavily into it. everyone will be into it to some degree because everyone will get some free delegates to send uh, so everyone will be involved a little bit but it'll be one aspect of the overall strategy how how hard do i want to be part of that uh that aspect of the game versus the other aspects of the game oh, okay that sounds cool and it, um, i hate to say it but I, we don't have a uh terraforming mars but oh. so people like me um, are they able to get the ter the base game on the Kickstarter? Oh yeah, we'll be doing that, of course. Um, we'll we'll absolutely have. That's another. That's one of the reasons why we're doing this Kickstarter. I should probably address that. So, like people have said, like, well, why is Stronghold doing a a Kickstarter? You know, they're a big established company. They don't need to. But then again, the second biggest company in the industry founded themselves uh, on doing Kickstarters. That's Simon. They were called Cool Mini or Not, and they still do mostly most of the business is still done on Kickstarter. So a much bigger company is still doing, uh, doing Kickstarters. We're doing this specifically to get the word out about Terraforming Mars even more than it's already out there because there are a lot of gamers that only focus on what's happening on Kickstarter. They don't even look at regular distribution. So if they're only focused there and we do this great Kickstarter for Terraforming Mars Terminal, they might be like, huh, well, yeah, I, I think I want to buy into this game. So they'll get the they'll get the expansion, but then they'll be able to get the base game, the first expansion, second, third, and fourth expansion as well. We'll have the packages and add-ons so that uh, people can buy in heavily into the entire thing. Awesome, and they might come and check out your back catalog at the game store as well. Absolutely, you know, one it's it's you know we you know it's all about you know tr Kickstarter has become uh, a marketing event for companies. Whether that was the original intent, whether it's that's uh, what it's supposed to be. It has become a marketing event. If you put something out on Kickstarter, you now have free marketing. You now have another way of people looking at your company, at your games, and what's happening. So we're happy to do Kickstarters on a selective basis. Um, Aftershock we did, as you know, earlier this year. You mentioned that. Now we're going to be doing Terraforming Mars Turmoil. This is our flagship product, so you know we're going to do a good job with this. Later on uh, in May, we're going to do Egizia Shifting Sands Edition. This is a second edition of a, a game that came out about 15 years ago, uh, a Euro game. Fantastic game that's been out of print for a while. We're bringing it back with some brand new mechanics involved. And then the, the fourth one that we announced that we're going to be doing this year is called Stronghold Undead. And that is a, a standalone expansion to our game called Stronghold, which is a castle defense game. A, you know, a good guys defending the castle where the orcs and 
uh, and uh, goblins and, and, and things are coming to, to destroy the castle. And in Undead, of course, now you've got vampires and things like that storming the castle. You can think of it as the uh, Helm's Deep, you know, uh, a way that that, that you know, goes down in, the, in Lord of the Rings. It's that kind, of, that kind of style game. So we're really, really happy about all of the things we're doing this year on Kickstarter. It's not going to be our basic model of doing business, but it's going to be, like I said, another way of doing it, especially when we want to push out uh, a, a bigger project um, or a project where we want to get even more buzz on. Awesome. And um, looking at that, so can you tell what can you tell us about your experience thus far? Because you did the aftershock, but then as soon as I went, it was trying to get a whole get on you or get be able to get with you to do an interview. I noticed it canceled, and then it came back on. What can you tell us about the whole experience with the aftershock? Well, it you know Kickstarter is a is a is a excellent um, means of getting feedback. So when we put it out there, um, we had. A bunch of feedback from people who said, well, I'm not really looking for this. I just want the Alan Moon game like this. I don't really need these upgraded Meeple components and things like that. So that was a, uh, a market force working in exactly the way it should. If we went out and we did a game and we just brought it out into regular distribution, we would never get that kind of feedback. So we put it out there and people were like, no, you know what? I don't really like this. I don't really want this. I don't think I want this. Now, normally this is not the way I want to do business. I'm a professional publisher and I want to bring out a game the way that um, we envision it. So it wasn't the gameplay that was the issue. There was sort of the add-ons, the uh, the upgrades and things like that, that they didn't like. So we we stopped it, we canceled it, we reformatted, and we brought it back out. And we did three times the funding goal, so it was not an issue about funding it. We actually had canceled it, and we had already funded it. This time, we took it back, we restructured, brought it out, and we did even better on the second time through with different kinds of goals, stretch goals for gamers. Um, and of course, we're going to deliver because we know how to do this. I mean, Stronghold does about 25 different game releases per year over the last couple of years, which is obviously substantial. Uh, so we're going to obviously deliver on all of the games that I just mentioned uh, on time, just as one would expect. Uh, gamers can always look to Stronghold games to do the right thing for them uh, and, you know, and for the hobby in general. Awesome. That's good to hear. And when you came back on, when you relaunched the Kickstarter, did you get a lot of the backers from the initial campaign that came back on? Or what was the experience of that? Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. A lot of people were like, oh, why'd you go away? You know, come on back. We had told them we were going to come back. It wasn't like it was a surprise that we were. Um, I didn't do an exact analysis of who came back, who didn't come back. But um, I'm certain that we got almost all of the ones that, that were there, plus plus more. So the total number of backers at the end were more than than it was when we had canceled it about halfway through, give or take. Uh, so uh, uh, overall, successful. Um, I expect Terraforming Mars Turmoil and Degizia Shifting Sands and Stronghold Undead uh, to be extraordinarily uh, successful. I mean, I mean, I can't imagine the high end on Terraforming Mars Turmoil is going to be going to be very, very, very big because of its it's pedigree. It's everyone is, you know, looking forward to more and more term terraforming Mars. Awesome. Yeah. So we'll watch out for that. So that's exciting. And something else you do besides just creating games is something that Tom Vassell, according to the, <laughs> um, the intro of your show, didn't believe in at first. Is that right? Yeah. Well, that's a, uh, that's a great one. So yeah. So, uh, back now it's like four years ago, Ignacy Chevichek, president of Portal Games, uh, came to me at a BGG con. He said, I want, I want to start doing a podcast. I'm like, oh, that's cool, Ignacy. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's it's big. He goes, I want to do it with you. You're a great personality. You gotta, you're a great personality with a great personality, and you great <laughs> spokesman for the industry. Would you like to do it? I'm like, sure. You're, he's a friend of mine. I'm like, he's a major publisher out in Europe. That would be wonderful. Let's do it. I immediately went to Tom. I said, we're going to start doing this podcast. Um, and, you know, we, we like to get on the Dice Tower Network, you know, when we do it. And he's like, you'll never last 10 episodes. <laughs> this is what he says to me. I'm like, come on, don't vote against us here. Don't root against us. He's, he says, it's a big commitment to time. And I'm like, yeah, I know. We're, we're going to do it. So he says, well, we'll see. After 10 episodes, that's sort of back then that was his benchmark. You know, if you got to after 10 episodes and your content was good and your quality was good, then you have a chance of getting on. We got to 10 episodes easily. 
And I said, Tom, how about it? And he was listening at the time. He goes, yeah, you guys are doing a good job because we're, we're doing something very different, right? We're doing a uh, an industry-centric podcast where I like to say we are unraveling the onion. We're unveiling, we're opening the kimono. We're showing you what goes on inside the industry, either talking about the news of the industry. Oh, by the way, this is called Board Games Insider. You can look that up on iTunes or, or Stitcher or wherever great podcasts are, are shown. Board Games Insider. We show what's going on, talk about the news of the industry, which we scrape across you know, various sources, so we get that. We take questions from our listeners uh, over on our geek, uh, on our guild on Board Game Geek. There's a place to you know, go there and Board Games Insider under Guilds Podcast. You go, you put up questions, we, we scrape them out of there, and we, and we answer them. Uh, and then, of course, we talk about what's going on inside the companies. You know, so, like, what's the newest? We give some, we give some hints. We, we give away first-time ever heard news, too, because we want to keep people listening uh, on the podcast, too. So we have a great time with that. So everybody who, who wants to hear more and learn more about the industry itself, I would like to highly recommend Board Games Insider with Ignacy Chevichek and Stephen Bonacore. <laughs> yeah, I really enjoy it. Thank you. And um, it seems like sometimes you give them a hard time about the weather, too, maybe. <laughs> well, Florida weather, where I now live, South Florida weather specifically, is wonderful. In Poland and back in New Jersey, where I used to live, yeah, not so much. He was showing pictures of of his snow covered uh, parking lot. Uh, like I, I forgot what it was, when it was, it was like in November or something like that, or December. It, it was a lot of snow out in Poland that this year. Um, New Jersey was a very cold winter, but not a very snowy winter. So, so they, they caught a, they caught a break, but here in Florida, every day is like summer. It's like either every day during the winter, it's like in the seventies, sometimes in the eighties, it's amazing. And I'm an hour and, 20 minutes approximately from Tom, who lives way, way, way at the tip. I'm north of him by an hour and 20 minutes. I needed that buffer zone because I can't be that close to Tom Vassell or else, you know, the wars would start. Oh, there you go. For sure. Yeah, most definitely. And I just noticed I was listening to episode 98 and then I noticed that episode 99 dropped. So you're almost to that 100 episodes pretty soon here. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. We have recorded 100 and 101. We recorded 100 a while back. Well, I mean, let's say it was about four weeks ago because it was a, it's a very special episode, as one would imagine. So uh, look forward to hearing uh, a special guest on episode 100. Maybe we just mentioned his name a minute ago. So uh, that, that's what I was just thinking. Yeah, that's what we did. So uh, yeah, you'll t it's the first time anybody's hearing that. So you might hear you might hear Mr. Vassal say a few words on episode 100. And uh, now we're going to continue because we, we you know, Ignacio and I have a good rapport. We're good friends. We enjoy doing it. Uh, it does take a time commitment between the two of us because we're running companies uh, and we're six hours apart, um, you know, uh, between Poland and uh, and East Coast time. So it's it's not easy. Then we have all the traveling that we do. Like, you know, if I'm, I'm at a convention someplace, I can't do it. If he's at a convention, he can't. And then we're both at conventions. So um, it's a it's a big it's a big to do to get us together. But, you know, we really want to spend that, you know, that um, 45 minutes uh, per week to to put this out for everybody, because, um, you know, we think it's important. We think, you know, we want to make sure that people understand that we're just two hopefully fairly smart guys who got into a good position to to bring games out to the rest of the world and we're 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 happy and uh, and blessed to be in that position so we want to share that with everybody yeah i really like it i enjoy the podcast and um is it uh, bi-weekly or weekly or how often do you guys usually release well in the beginning we did it bi-weekly every other week we brought one out and then we started doing them weekly it's virtually impossible to keep up a weekly schedule because of all of our travels and things but um so we sometimes we'll go like four weeks and you don't hear from us but then you'll hear like four you know then you heard four in a row which is right now what we're on right now we've been releasing week after week after week and you're going to hear them uh, you're going to hear it for at least another month uh every week so um i apologize to any listener out there that you know does that that we're having problems actually getting it every week but you know we are we're doing our best trust me to make sure that we give you some content as soon as we can uh, and um, i think in general you know we're doing a pretty good job of, uh, of putting stuff out for you yeah i really enjoy it it's pretty cool one of us thank you so that's awesome now minus we don't want to keep you all day uh steven so minus coming there to south florida to stalk you in person how will people go about keeping up with you 
They can stalk me. I enjoy a good stalker once in a while. But uh, uh, everybody should uh, do a few things. First of all, we mentioned the podcast, Board Games Insider, uh, with Ignacy and Steven. Check that out uh, wherever you get your podcasts. But then for on the company itself, you can go over to strongholdgames.com. Right there on the front page, we list all of our releases for the current year, uh, what has been released, and of course, what is releasing. We put up pre-orders there where you're going to get the game shipped to you for free uh, before anybody before it gets into distribution. So you can get all the brand new releases, including stuff that I mentioned just now, like like um, uh, That's Pretty Clever and Twice as Clever and Subtext, uh, another game by Wolfgang Warsh, and uh, Dizzle. And Bricks, another game by Wolfgang War. So all those games are on pre-order right now uh, on Stronghold Games' website. We also maintain a very healthy amount of promo cards that we sell, promo items that we sell uh, on, on there. So if you want to pimp out your game for Kanban or for Not Alone um, or for Terraforming Mars, go over to our promo section there and you'll see some really cool stuff that we do there. What else? You can follow us on Twitter. You know, I manage that Twitter feed myself, so it's at Stronghold Games. So you'll be talking directly to me. Uh, occasionally, other people might put something up, but I'm like responding to people's tweets that are out there, and I'm retweeting. And you're talking directly to me for for anything that that is stated uh, in response to something else. Uh, Facebook page is maintained very well, so that's slash Stronghold Games. So uh, we have an Instagram account as well. So. All of those great ways of, of talking to us and keeping the follow, keeping up with us uh, over time here. And, of course, we'd love to see people at conventions. I, I go to lots of them. So if you're going to be coming up soon, Geekway to the West. Um, after that BGG Con Spring, I'll be going out to the UK Games Expo in, in, uh, in England. And then we got Origins coming up. Gen Con, all of those great shows, Dice Tower Con in Florida. So I hope to see people at one of those shows. Thank you so much, Lake, for having me on. This has been uh, been great. Yeah, no problem. We really appreciate it. Gamer Leaf levels up. Wow, that was awesome sitting down with Stephen Bonacore of Stronghold Games. I hope you enjoyed it. Be on the lookout for his upcoming Kickstarter. And speaking of Kickstarter, let's see what's on there now. What is this place? What is it doing here in the Leaves computer? Oh, it's Kickstarter Corner with the Leaves. Tale, Roman Knucklebones. Metal coins and two games in one? You saw this on Kickstarter last week? Right, I did too. It was less than $400 away from reaching its goal. Not to fret, it's back and better than ever. Already reached its funding goal and surpassed it in fact. Tale is the Roman version of Knucklebones, featuring the tactical feel of stimulated bones. So very close to the stretch goals too. Go back and before Friday the 19th of April, Tell them Gamer Leaf sent you in the comments. Plus, over on the giveawaygeek.com, they're doing a giveaway. Over Battle, the All War is still on Kickstarter. It needs you, it needs me. You like war games, but the setup is too long? Well, not with Over Battle. That's actually part of the play. Want to know more? So did I. So I sat down with Rob for a little heart to heart. Go give it a listen in their Kickstarter update entitled Quick Update on the Video and a Personal Podcast Intro. Listening on the go and can't click straight over? Not to worry, engrave this in your brain and remember to check out overbattle.com which is the easiest way to get there. And make sure you and a friend back it before Saturday the 20th of April so we can make it a reality. Your kids are losing way too many dice. Plus, you want to be the coolest one on the block when it comes to rolling and storing your dice? Then you're going to need the Nomad's Magnetic Dice Tower by Master Monk. It's a magnetic dice tower featuring handcrafted inlays and a unique design that works with the Nomad's Armory. It folds down nicely and is held together by earth magnets. The audio alone just doesn't cut it. I'd encourage you to jump on over and check out their Kickstarter page as well as giving my interview with the creator to listen. Find it in my episode entitled Be the Coolest One on the Block with the Nomad's Magnetic Dice Tower or find it in their update entitled Interview with Gamerleaf and our next live stream this Saturday. 
Shard Hunters the Card Game. We teased about this during the sponsor spot of the show. It's simple and dynamic gameplay, exclusive artwork, love dark fantasy games but don't have much time. Then this 20 minute game is for you. Some things about the game, actions happen simultaneously, no handicap for new players, no stealing, no player elimination, and monster cards are completely language independent. Plus, the art is amazing. Jump on over and check out their Kickstarter campaign and back it before Friday the 10th of May. If I got asked who's your favorite designer that if you could, you'd want all their games, that's easy. Hands down, I'd say Ta-Te Wu. He's back. This time, it's a game that uses my favorite mechanics of deck building in Promenade, the game of impressionist art, in which you become the most prestigious painting collector in a 2-4 player economic deck building game of impressionist art. Players are art collectors and the goal is to manipulate marketing value by acquiring and exhibiting impressionistic paintings. Players receive points by exhibiting paintings from their hand and additional points from the paintings and gold in their collection at the end of the game. When the game ends, the player with the most victory points wins the game. Go check it out and back the Kickstarter before Sunday, May 12th. Plus, you can go and search on my website for Promenade, and you should be able to find the episode that way. You enter the unknown dungeon as the hunter. Turn by turn, the dungeon reveals itself to your party. You must adapt to your strategy. Choose when to forge ahead or when to step back and regroup. The dungeon can be unforgiving, and even in competitive play, you might find it necessary to forge alliances to survive. Your team makes noise as they explore. The more noise they make, the more they risk awakening the dark evil that lurks within. Soon you realize that you have become the hunted. Sound familiar? Not my fault. You missed the Dungeons of Infinity on Kickstarter? Yes, that was my fault. Well, I'm here to mend my mistakes to let you know we're not too late. If you missed the campaign, don't dismay. Click the link in my show notes to show your support and not have to be worried. If it won't reach its funding goal, because it's already been done for you on the Kickstarter. Dungeons of Infinity is a board game for 1-5 to five players set in a mythical kingdom ruled by King Armiger. His land is full of dungeons built in the distant past. He recruits teams of heroes to delve into many dungeons to free the land from the evils that lie within. Head on over and make your pledge today by clicking the link in the show notes before you miss it yet again. But this time, it won't be my fault. Now it's come to our least favorite time of the day, and yours too. Time for me to get on with my life, and y'all to get on with yours. Go ahead and get geeky, stay geeky, and bring others into Geekfold by sharing this episode with them. Game Relief out. <laughs> Gamer Leaf levels up. Tune in next week to see if Gamer Leaf's luck holds up.